how are you guys today as you can tell by the title of the video we are talking about the best books that i read in 2022 i have to say 2022 was a bit of an unusual reading year for me i went off the charts with how much i read this year i have never read this much in my entire life and I feel like it has to do with the fact that I lived in South Korea last year and so I saved a bunch of money, came home, took several months off of work to write a novel and I have written that novel. We are currently in the stages of editing. I'm just taking a long time <laughs> and I also work part-time so I believe it has a lot to do with that but no complaints. I have a lot to talk to you about. Some amazing books were read this year. For those of you who are new to my channel, hey, what's up? It's me, Elise. If you are not new to this channel, welcome back. It's good to see your face again. As always, be sure to subscribe and join the family. And let's think of a comment for today. Okay, okay, comment of the day. I would love to know your top favorite reads of 2022. Then I need to add them to my TBR for next year. <laughs> <laughs> even though I have all of these. Today, I am going to separate this video into a few different categories. First, we have my 4.75 to 5 star read. Then I want to talk about my 4 to 4.5 star reads. And then I want to talk about honorable mentions. I rate my books over the year as I read them. However, a lot of the books have kind of changed because if I don't find myself thinking about them, then maybe they aren't a five-star read, even though I had a really great time reading them at the start. These writings and thoughts about these books have shifted over time based on how much they stuck with me throughout the year. Let's get started and let's see how concise I can keep this. Let's start with the 4.75 to 5 star reads. These are books that hit hard. They made me feel I think about them all the time. I had such a good time reading them that I was sad when I was done reading them. At the top of the list, I have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. Oh my gosh, this book was so fun. I had the best time reading it, and this is going to be a series. I did read the sequel, didn't love it quite as much, but still had a grand time. I think that this series has potential to be a five-star series for me in the future, so I'm so excited for the author to continue the series and write more books. Then we have The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset. Oh my gosh, this book was so wholesome. The character growth was phenomenal. I loved the little girl. I believe her name was Rosie. And I still think about this book to this day. And I listened to it on audiobook and the narrator is phenomenal. Loved her. Then we have Iron Widow. This book was fun. The world, the characters and how unique and like how they fit together was just so cool. It's just gonna rip me to shreds with the next book but it's fine. We'll manage when we get there. Then we have Wings of Fire by Tweet T. Sutherland. My students that I taught in South Korea absolutely raved about this series, so I decided I had to get my hands on it, and I finally did, and I loved it so much that I bought the series myself. <laughs> this world is phenomenal. I think it's definitely going to be a five-star series for me when I finish it. That being said, so was this third book of the series called The Hidden Kingdom. It follows this dragon, Glory, and I just loved her internal growth and things that she went through, and then the action was awesome. I just, this story of the series, these two are my favorite so far. Then we have The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. Oh, this book, I think it hit me so much and sticks in my brain so much because I read this about a month after I left South Korea. I had lived there for three years and it's based on South Korean folklore. So for me, it really was special and the imagery, it felt very whimsical and like Howl's Moving Castle kind of thing. Then we have Piranesi. Like when I was reading this book, it was good, but after I finished it, I just found myself thinking about it again and again and again. And it was written in like a journal kind of style and that was different enough that it stuck. Then we have Atomic Habits. This book is so good. I read a chapter a day because it can get to be a lot and like my brain just needs to chunk things up I guess. There are a lot of things that I started doing in this book 
that I'm still doing to this day. I think it's just a really good reminder that like, yes, you can. And not just yes, you can, but here's how. And I, I really like that because I feel like a lot of self-help books say, yes, you can. And that's it. Then we have Book Lovers. This book was so fun to read. I think annotating it definitely made the experience more fun and more memorable. I think about Nora often, but I don't think about Charlie often. I loved him in the book, but Nora's my girl. Next we have Debbie's Distraction by Ruby Dixon. This is like, I think one of my favorite books that she's ever written. I loved Debbie so much. She's so like nerdy and like excited about learning and just she just has such a pure heart and like helping people and I loved it so much. Then we have Places We've Never Been and this is a YA kind of a romance, kind of a self journey book and first off look at that cover amazing. I read this in one sitting like you know those books that you read in one night but on steroids like I didn't I didn't leave the chair I just read it in one go and I had a really good time reading it okay and next we have the queen Juliet Cross I read all of the books that she has written in this series so far and so that's six of them five in a novella two of them were bangers absolute bangers and we have Wolf Gone Wild which is the first one and I think this hit really hard because it was just fun and unique to me contemporary urban fantasy kind of thing going on and there was like a lot of like emotion but also action going on and then we have always practice safe hex which is even higher tier than wolf gone wild like one of my favorite favorite reads of the entire year it was so good like the spice and the things that they're going through and the development of their relationship julia cross love you girl Next is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I read a few of these graphic novels last year and then I continued the rest of them this year and absolutely love the series 100%. Then we have It Happened One Summer. This book was so fun. Yeah, I loved their relationship. I loved Piper's transformation and her character growth. I loved the setting. It was just a really fun time. So those are my 4.75 to 5 star reads of the year. Top tier. Then we're going to go to 4 star to 4.5 star reads. Were really great, but maybe they were just missing that little something that kept them from being a 5 star read. So first we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is the first book I read in 2022. I read it the like one day all the way through and it just like hit me. It was uncomfortable and the way that she uses dialogue kind of drives me a little bit insane because like girl i'm already using my eyeballs and my brain to read your book can you make it a little bit easier but it's fine it's fine but this one really stuck with me and i find myself thinking about it a lot still and just like how complicated relationships can be no matter what form they are friendship family intimate relationship relationships are complicated and nuanced. Then we have Malibu Rising. I tried reading this, but then I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo first, and I think it had that little connection that I needed to really get into Malibu Rising. So then I read it fully through, and the last half just like blew my mind. Then we have Clara and the Sun. Clara is like this AI friend, and she was just so hopeful and optimistic and i just loved the way that she viewed the world this was just so unique to me it was very like futuristic i really enjoyed how different that book was another book in this tier is the love hypothesis i had such a good time reading it i want to go back and annotate it i just loved adam and olive's connection i just loved the slow pacing of it and like that he's been pining for her for like ever and i feel like i learned a lot about the academic setting i was really sad because i wasn't surprised about some of the things that happened to her because i've heard those rumors before and i'm kind of sad like hearing it from a woman who has experience in this work field that it like it is a thing that happens but i think it's something that needs to be heard about more so that hopefully things can happen 
to prevent that in the future. I digress. I do still think about Adam and Olive a lot. Then we have Lawrence Barbarian by the Queen Ruby Dixon. This is the first book in the Ice Home series and I think I really really liked it because they kind of left the icy world and went across the ocean and were on an island for a little while so it was all like tropical and I really liked that difference and I loved the action and I loved her mate. It was a fun read. Then we have Set on You. This is actually Amy Leo's debut novel. I loved that it was about a fitness influencer. I loved that she's Asian American. She's not your typical body. I loved the haters to lovers aspect of it. It was just really fun and then I liked her struggle with social media and with her body image and things like that I, I just i felt like it was really realistic and that it could re a lot of people could relate to that then we have to kill a kingdom this book was ooh, there was so much action there was so much going on all the time it was very fast paced in my opinion and i just had a really good time listening to it the narrators did a great job then we have nothing to see here this was a touch of magical realism. It was so quirky, a little bit weird. So were the characters, but I also loved that too. It just, they wrapped it up really well together. And I, I liked the ending a lot too. It was a good time. Then we have When Stars Collide by Susan Elizabeth Phillips. I just thought the pacing of it was really well done. Enemies to lovers, then friends to lovers, then like in an actual relationship, and then there was like this mystery added to it. It just was really well rounded. One of the main characters was an opera singer. I haven't really seen that very often, so I thought that was fun. Then we have The Royals Next Door. Eventually I'm going to do a video about underrated books and to me this was an underrated book. I think something that was really unique to me was the fact that there were royals present in this book but the book wasn't about royals and I think that really stuck to me. Also she has this thing where she's a teacher and some photos get leaked and they're like hmm we don't know if you can be a teacher anymore and that really upsets me because number one I was a teacher both of my parents were teachers and you know what teachers are human they also wanted to throw in the caveat she has like a romance podcast and they're like we don't know if that's good for the students are you really a role model if you talk about romance she's a human i liked how that was handled and talked about in this book then we have the fine print i loved rowan and zara they were just like perfect opposites attract situation haters to lovers and this is set in dreamland and has a lot of parallels to disney world and i used to work there so i really related to a lot of the struggles that zara was going through as an employee there this really hit then we have muscles and monsters this is a monster romance novella i wanted it to be so much longer and honestly if it had been longer it would have gotten a five star for sure I just need more and I know that's my problem not the author's problem then we have a duel with the vampire lord by Elise Kova this book continues the married to magic series which I've really been enjoying they're kind of like one-off books but they're in the same world but they like touch on different parts of that world I just love the expansion of it there was a lot of action I felt like it was a little longer than it needed to be and some of the, there was a few pacing issues still a really fun read for me then we have reminders of him this one hit me so hard I still think about this a lot it was so beautiful I debated putting this in here this is not the funnest read but this story does stick with me so I think it deserves to be ranked and the writing is so smooth i just think that this is a story that happens to a lot of women i could see the way that lily thinks being the way that some women in this experience actually think it's a very eye-opening book for a lot of people i'm glad that she got her happily ever after and it starts with us all right you guys on to the honorable mentions of 2022 i have quite a few now honorable mentions may not be the highest rated book that there ever was but i had a fun time reading them they made me laugh they made me giggle they made me feel good even though maybe they aren't hard hitting or maybe they don't have a huge lesson to teach 
we just we had a good time so some books that made me really laugh are the unhoneymooners there are a few moments in here that i really didn't like but aside from those few moments I laughed so much reading this book. Love on the Brain was a wild time. Um, I also annotated this. There were just some moments that were so wild. B is so unique and funny. Dating Dr. Dill. I did love the enemies to lovers aspect, but I laughed so many times reading this. Mr. Wrong Number, another one that was missing a few things, but made me laugh a lot. Oh no, I lost a book. Some more honorable mentions are the X Hex and <laughs> the X Hex and the Kiss Curse. I had a really fun time reading these. This little world that she's building is so fun. We have this book. This book shook me up. This was a page turner. Messed up? Yeah. Yeah, messed up. It took me for a wild ride and um it stuck with me. It stuck with me another honorable mention is the deal or this like series that it's created along with briar you i'm really enjoying this world and the series and the characters the next honorable mention is one of us is dead this is me dipping my toe into thrillers and like mystery i thought it was really well written and the like details and inf information were given to you in a way that like kept you really engaged. I was really annoyed that the literal last chapter is when you found everything out. That was a little like for me, but I feel like that's how those kind of books are written in general. I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you made it this far, you're a trooper. I had so much fun talking about these books. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I am very curious if we have any of these in common or maybe you hated some of these books. Feel free to comment down below. Now I'm really hungry and I'm gonna go eat some food. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone. Until next time. Oh, and uh, Happy New Year. Let's put y'all away.